Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for gathering us together. We thank you for the fellowship we have with you and with one another. We thank you, Lord, because every time we gather together, it is your plan and purpose that you will prepare us more and more to be fit for the kingdom into which you have called us. We know you are preparing good things for us in heaven. And every time we have opportunity of gathering together like this, you also get us prepared so that we'll be fit for that place of abode above. Lord, we pray that with all the efforts you make and all the things you do, we will respond appropriately so that we'll be prepared as you want us to be in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the things you are doing in our lives and for the things you still intend to do. We are asking, O oh Lord, that your truth will prevail in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that this day, as we speak to our hearts, we will not just hear like the normal thing to do. We will not just be hearers of the word only, but we will have grace from you to be doers of the word so that the blessing that comes upon doers of the word will come upon every one of us in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. The place we are going to take our leading text today is in Isaiah chapter 30 and it's verse 15. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Here the Lord Almighty spoke to the children of Israel, and he told them wherein lay their power, their strength, rest of security and yet unfortunately the children of israel took it not to heart and therefore god said through the prophet and ye would not the problem god has with a lot of people today is that even though the lord may point out the good way the perfect way and the way for us to have rest peace security, strength, and power. Unfortunately, many people do not take to the way of the Lord. I pray, just like we have prayed now, that we will be doers of the word. That we will not just come and hear, only have our ears tingled, have our minds challenged, only open many pages of the scriptures without doing them. That will not be right. It should not be commented about us like God commented about them. And ye would not. I pray that we'll be obedient to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at that verse again. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, ye shall be saved in quietness, and in confidence shall be your strength. Let me stop there. It says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. He was talking to the children of Israel, and he told them they needed to return. They had been scattered all about, not just physically now, but departing from the word of God, departing from the way of God. Departing from the, we, from the wisdom of God. Departing from the worship of God. And he said, in returning, they will be saved. The Lord is calling upon us that we will need to return to the way of God. We need to return to the word of God. Return to the wisdom of God. Return to the true worship of God. And rest. And abide. You see, with the children of Israel, they were not stable. 
They were not resting. But the Lord wanted them to abide and to rest. And he said, in that way will they be saved and secured. Then he said, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. He was calling them to quietness. Calling them to trust, faith, confidence in him. He said, if they will do that, then they will be able to have strength or power. I'm actually talking on that second part of the verse. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. I'm talking to you today on the power of a quiet life. The power of a quiet life. The world in which we live is so noisy. So noisy that it is difficult to find a quiet environment. In the home, in the house, there's so much noise. Noise produced by ourselves, produced by our neighbors, that we do not have the time or the space to meditate, to think. You see, when there is so much noise, when there is so much disturbance, it's difficult to meditate, difficult to pray. Not only that, when we go out, the noise is still there. When we come back in the evening, the noise is still there. Noise of worldly music, noise of worldly conversation, noise of argument, noise of disagreement, noise of gossip, noise of backbiting, noise of just talking on useless, irrelevant things of life. And these things disturb us from having a quiet life, a meditative life, a praying life. Most people, however, just adjust to the noise. And they become so noisy themselves that they do not have quiet acts and they do not have quiet lives. The meditative quiet life is not common anymore. During the daytime, you are either talking or hearing others talk. Actually, most of us are talkatives. And we lose so much power, so much strength, so much respect to, so much honor because of our way of living. Talkatives lose a lot. Most married people talk too much. Too much. And many of the things we talk about, married people, are irrelevant, unnecessary, unprofitable, negative destructive, discouraging. Married people, quite a lot of married people talk too much. They talk too much, commenting too much about things that can be overlooked with the children, things can be overlooked, that can be overlooked with the husband, things that can be overlooked with the wife, things can, that can be overlooked in the community, in the house. We talk too much. And how about the singles who have not married? Yes, the same thing they talk too much too. They do not make use of the privilege that they are still single to have a meditative life, a quiet life. If we can discover the grace to be quiet, there will be more peace, more strength, more power in our lives. Today, I bring this message to you in three points. Number one, our need of power. We need power. You live in a world where the devil is going up and down to and fro, a destructive devil, a malicious devil, a devil that is so wicked having a plan to deceive, to control, to destroy. You need power from above. We need power. In a world where there is so much temptation, where there is so much heartache, you need power. A weakened heart, a powerless heart cannot withstand all the trauma that we come against in the world. We need power. I'll talk about that later. Number two, loss through noise. Loss through much talking. We lose a lot because we talk a lot. Our drums leak. And the precious, the precious oil, ointment in the drum, in the tank, leaks away so much. It's like a person that is using a vehicle. And the tank is leaking. Always leaking. 
although the, the tank is full in the morning, yet dropping, dropping, dropping every time. By the time you need that vehicle, all the precious oil, costly oil that you are putting it into the tank, everything has leaked away. If we have power, if we have anointing, if we have the grace of God, if we have the goodness of God, if we, if we have the precious thing the Lord has given us in our hearts and lives, let's make sure we're not leaking through much talking. Some drums, some tanks, some vessels leak so much. We lose much by so much noise, by so much talking. Point three, power of quietness. Power of quietness. We need to discover that a quiet life, meditative life, a life that will always hold its peace and will only talk at the bidding of the Lord, will only talk at the challenge of the Lord. When the Spirit of God himself allows him to talk, then he speaks. Those are the people that know reality of power, continuity of power in their lives. Let's go back to point one. Our need of power. At the moment we came to Christ, each one of us was given power to become a child of God. That's what we are told in John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You received the Lord. And as you received him as Savior, you received him as the final sacrifice for all your sins. You received him as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Then your sins were taken away. And he gave you the power, the right, the authority to become a child of God. You received him as the Lord, as a controller, as a guide of your life. At that time when you received him and you said, not the world, not sin, not self, not Satan will control my life anymore, I now have Jesus. I received Jesus as a controller and the Lord of my life. You became a child of God. As many as received him, the people that received him as shepherd, as guide, the people that said, I've ruled my life and ruined my life. I've controlled myself and destroyed myself. I've guided myself and I've misled myself. But now I receive him as my shepherd, as my guide, as the one that goes before me to take me unto the Father and bring me to the destination up above in heaven. As many as receive him as the only guide, the perfect guide, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, you received him as a companion. You received him as the one that will hold your hand and empower you and lead you to the right place as the strength of your life. At that time, we received power. But then, even after that time, if we had learned the life of quietness and spirit-guided conversation, from that moment on, our lives would have been powerful and purposeful in God. What kind of power am I talking about? What kind of power do we say that we actually need? And the kind of power that we need to maintain in our lives. Let me give this to you before I read some references to you. Number one, power with God. That is power to prevail in prayer with God. Power to be able to make God move in your own life. Power to move the hand that holds the whole universe. Power with God. Number two, power to do good. Number three, power to overcome all temptations. There are temptations in this world. Various sizes, various shapes, of various descriptions. Temptations that touch different parts of life. Temptations that will try to look at the, 
they will try to identify the loophole, the weakness of your life, and just come in to pull you down. You need power against and power to overcome all temptations. Number four, power of godliness. Power of godliness. Number five, the power of the Spirit. Power of the Holy Ghost. Number six, power to witness. Number seven, power of speech. That your speech, your utterance, will enlighten, will instruct, will lead, will be pointed and effective. That your word will be weighty. That your word will have anointing and encouragement. That your word will be sought after. That people will know that there is something supernatural. There is something gracious. There is something edifying. There is something upliftment, up, uplifting in your speech. The power of speech. Number eight, the power of Christ's resurrection. How we need that power. How we need that power. Everything in the world is de deteriorating. And even things within man is collapsing and decaying. We need the renewing, the power of resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ to work in our lives every time. Number nine, power over disease and demons. Number ten, power over all the power of the enemy. Let me read some references to you. It may not be possible, may not have the time to read all the references related to these areas of power in our lives. But they are all in the word of God. Let me read a few to you. In Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Reading from verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, as thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Jacob had problem in life. We have too. Jacob had difficulty in his own family circle. A lot, a lot of us also have. You see, Esau was his twin brother. And Esau had, had hatred against Jacob for about 20 years now. Actually, it will go beyond 20 years. If you think about the time since they were born, it appears that there had been a conflict. There had been a rift, even between them. And Jacob had always eyed what Esau had. And Esau had always been trying to preserve himself and what he had away from Jacob. It's, it's been a long time. And now Jacob had had to run away because the hatred of Esau, hatred that Esau had against him came to a head. It came to a climax. And therefore Jacob ran away. It's been 20 years now and was trying to get back. And then he, he heard that the hatred was still there still strong. And Esau was still as militant as he was 20 years before, still wanting to destroy and kill Jacob. And therefore Jacob needed to prevail over that enemy. Even though Jacob had had promises from the Lord, if you read from chapter 28, and you read chapter 30, and you read chapter 32, you will see the promises God had given unto Jacob. Many of us have promises from the Lord, but we're so much busy in the world. There's so much noise around us. There's so much activity around us that we do not have time to stand upon and claim those promises of the Lord. At this time now, Jacob had to do something. Look at verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. He had many children. He had maids. He had servants. And because of all this, so much noise around. Always talking. He had many of the children to correct. Many of the maids to correct. Many of the servants to put right. Many cattle to oversee. A lot of things. So much noise. So much talking all the time. But now he knew. He needed some quietness. Quietness to meditate. See the direction in which his life was going. 
see the insecurity of his life and do something about it. Eventually, he got that time to be quiet. That time to meditate. That time to look up to the Lord. That time to wrestle with the problem. We are told that Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And this time he was only occupied with something spiritual. He had to call upon the Lord. He had to look up to the Lord. And we are told that eventually as a prince thou hast power with God and with men. And as prevailed he eventually found time to be quiet time to pray time to wrestle time to be engaged in this in something spiritual so that the problem will not destroy him the problem will not drown him let's look at osir chapter 12 osir chapter 12 from verse 3 he took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel, and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Here we are told about Jacob. That he made supplication and he prayed. Because of this prayer, when he was able to find a quiet environment, when he sent all the people that would have been talking to him, or people who would have been talking to, when he sent them away, and he, had, he was alone with the angel, and he prayed, made supplication, and he prevailed, this is given to us as an example. There's a memorial about this that we ourselves. If we're going to overcome the difficulties, the trials, the problems, the enmity that is leveled against us, and all the plans of the enemy, we'll need time to be quiet, to be alone with God. And we'll need time to pray, make supplication before the Lord. I said also, we need the power to do good. I told you I'll not be able to read all the references. When you get home on your own, you can read in um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. But you see, many people, uh, they, they just speak, they just talk. They do not meditate, they do not observe. Many times we need to quietly observe people before we'll be able to see their needs. You need that quietness to meditate, to evaluate, to examine the height and the depth of the needs of the people around. Otherwise, all the things we try to do, we may not really effectively be doing good in the lives of other people. You want to have the power to do good, you need quietness to meditate. Meditate. Sometimes it's in the home. You wives, you will need quietness. You'll need time to meditate and see what good thing you can do that your husband, it will take your husband by surprise. But you know, some of us will live our lives day to day without ever thinking, without ever meditating. What can I do that will meet a real need in the life of my husband? Oh, that's going to take some time to be quiet, to observe, to evaluate, and to think, and to pray. We husbands too, there are times we just need to meditate. Watch your wife and examine the need. And evaluate the need. We need that time of quietness that will know things that she would really cherish. Things that will really be important to her. That will do good in her life. You see with our children, we need to take time and be observant on our children. You see sometimes our words become valueless to our children. Why? Because we never think before we talk. We just promise our child, okay child, I'll do this for you. After we have said it. Then we saw that that thing will not be good for that child. And therefore we couldn't do it. And the child will say, Daddy or Mommy, look at what you promised me. Eh, I cannot do it again. Anytime you speak, the child will not take you serious. Because you do not meditate, you do not keep quiet before you promise what you are going to do. The same thing with our neighbors. If we do not quietly observe, quietly see what the need is, we will not be able to see what to do. If we talk too much, 
and we just talk here, talk here, talk there, we may see that our words are losing power. They are losing effect. We need to meditate. We need to be quiet. We need to be observant. We need to be prayerful so that we we'll retain the power to do good. Not only that, there are many temptations that come our way. And we need power to overcome. Temptations every day. Every day. Last week, I spoke about the present evil world. And those of us who mix with the world, you have to go to the place of work. We see so much that is temptation to us. And those of us that are working over there in the world, you have to go into an office, you have to be in a market, you have to be in the bus, you have to be over here, you have to be over there. Many, many temptations will come across our way. And we need the time to be quiet. The time to meditate. The time to look up to the Lord. And the time to really pray. You know, praying takes time. Praying takes time. And without carving out that time, if you are all the time, noise within, noise without, and there is no rest at all, we'll not be able to have the power to overcome all the temptations against our lives. Look at it, Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 29 through to verse 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Isn't that what Jacob did? They that wait upon the Lord. That means you'll get away from the noise. You'll stop the talking, or hearing the people talk. And you just make yourself to be with the Lord, waiting upon the Lord. Those are the people that will renew their strength. I was talking to the workers uh, the, other, the other week on Wednesday, and I reminded the workers on how Charles Finney will take the time, and he will read and he will pray. When he saw that, the power, the strength, the anointing, the authority in his life, in his ministry was decreasing. He'll take a day off and he'll just be quiet before the Lord to pray, wait upon the Lord, to fast before the Lord. And he always renewed his strength. And he said in his writing that the power will come back with freshness. The anointing will come back with a new kind of aspect. And that is what we need in our lives. You see, if you are always in the world, always walking, always talking, always active, always here and there, and you have no time to wait upon the Lord, to renew your strength, how will you be able to overcome in all the arrows and all the things the devil might be throwing at you? Then we need the power of godliness. You see, the world is ungodly. The world is unrighteous. And there is so much sin in the world. And if we're going to be godly in our lives, if we're going to have the character of God, the character of Christ in our lives, oh, we need quietness. We need quietness. To even evaluate and see all the things that are going on. Otherwise, you can be easily deceived. Easily deceived. It is a meditative heart that will compare every offer coming to him, compare it with the Bible meditatively. And ask himself, quietly and meditatively, how does this agree with the word of God? Because otherwise, the devil will show you the kingdoms of the world and the glories thereof. And before you know at all where to choose and what to choose, if you are not a meditating type, if you are not the quiet person, you will discover in your life you have made a wrong choice. And you will not be able to live a godly life. Before you can have the power of godliness, you need this thing we're talking about. You'll pray in your life. You will always be, also be meditative in your own life. Then we need the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, let's look at this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. From verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye shall ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost 
not many days hence. Verse 8. But he shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Let's stop there for a moment. You see, it says, Wait for the promise of the Father. And those disciples came together. They went, they came away from the noise in the community. And they shut up themselves. And they had time to consecrate. Time to meditate. Time to lay everything upon the altar. Time to look at all their inconsistencies at the time when Jesus Christ was being betrayed and crucified. And they had time to readjust everything. Time to pray unto the Lord. It was at that time, while they were withdrawn from the noise of the world, and they were now able to wait upon the Lord, the power fell, the power came upon them. Do you know that there are so many of us that have come to this church, and we have been saved, and we have been sanctified, and yet we lack the power of the Holy Ghost. We lack the endowment of power from on high. And it is evident in our lives that we are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we have no time to wait upon the Lord. We have so many of our brothers who are just all the time on the move. Talking, talking, talking every time. From morning, the moment they wake up in the morning, talking to children, talking to wife, talking to this, talking to that. And when they go out, talking in the bus, talking in the office, talking everywhere. And how are we going to find time to wait upon the Lord so that the power of God will come afresh and in a mighty way like waves of the ocean upon our lives. And when we come back here in the evening, there are some people, again, they're still talking. Maybe after they had uh, they have, uh, you know, released themselves, they have uh, washed or whatever. After coming back from the office, some of them will even go to sit down with the people that are playing the local game in front of the house, talking, talking, talking. How are we going to have the power of God in our lives? When our lives are occupied with talking all the time, some of our women, oh, too much talking. That's why many of our women, we don't have the power of God in the kitchen while we're cooking. And all the other women also cooking in the kitchen uh, with us, talking all the time. Or it may be that a grandmother has come from the village and the grandmother will talk and talk and talk. Well, she doesn't have any other thing to do. She's, she doesn't know the Lord. She doesn't know the Word of God. She doesn't know the Kingdom of God. All she has is talking. And the talking, the conversation will go from village to village. Will come from our backyard to our, the front of our house to the palace of the chief and to this person. They talk about somebody that died 20 years ago. Conversation all the time. It is when they have talked and they are tired and they are yawning. About to sleep now, they will say, well, we have to go and sleep now. We can't read Bible. We are tired. All the time had been spent on talking. Or it may be that your mother has come from the village. Because mother has come from the village or come from your town, no prayer, no Bible reading. And your mother will call you, you may even be a man and you are married, and your mother will call you and it's talk, 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 talk. And there's no other thing. Once mother has come, no prayer, no quietness, and there is no meditation anymore. How are we going to have the power of God? Now we need another power. What's that power? The power to witness. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. To see if we're going to really witness effectively, we need the power of God. The power of God. That when you witness, your word will have strength, will have authority, will have power. Then the power of speech that will make your word witchy. Make your word valuable. Make your word instructive. Power of speech. I'm sure you know it in our district church here. Sometimes we'll give the study scripture to a brother or a sister to teach. And you really enjoy the Bible. That brother or sister having the power of speech because she has some quietness in her life. He has some quietness in his life. And because he spends time, she spends time in praying, meditating upon the word of God. He will come, she will come, teach side the scripture, and you really benefit. You, you are challenged. 
And sometimes you are writing, sometimes you cannot try it again. The word is just sinking into your heart. And after that sad scripture, you really pray and say, I thank the Lord that my eyes were opened today. But another time, another person will teach sad scripture. Everything will be flat, watery, weak, no authority, no understanding. And you will wonder, what have I got today from the third scripture? You know why? Because that person, Sunday morning, he, she, he woke up in the morning, or she woke up in the morning, talking, talking, talking. Only talk. There is no meditation. There is no quietness. There is no prayer. Only talking. And immediately the children wake up still talking. Have you taken this? Have you taken that? Why did you put that? They are only talking in their lives. No time for meditation. And they are going to teach the scripture that morning. And then they come to the church. It may be they even come a few minutes before the service. But they say, well, it's not time of service yet. They look at their resource. They say, well, singing is not starting now. They're still talking. And they're going to teach. No meditation. No collating of their materials together. No ordering of things together. They have no time to meditate and say, oh God, I need power. I need authority. I need anointing on the things who are going to allow me to speak today. And so that is why you will find that some of our people, we do not have the power of speech. The power of speech. So that we'll be able to put for the word of God and it will have anointing, authority and power. And also we need the power of Christ's resurrection. The power of Christ's resurrection. And the power over disease and the power over demons. As well as power over all the power of the enemy. Now, why is it that some people got this power before, but now they're so weak? Now, they do not have the power. That leads us to point two. Loss through noise. By noise, I mean much talking. And as I said earlier, talkatives will lose so much in their lives. Already you would have discovered that, that uh, sometimes talking can make a person to lose. A lot in life. And uh, let, let me give you some illustration to start with. You know, sometimes it may be that this country may send uh, an individual on an international kind of level to another nation to go and make negotiation for the country. And uh, that person is sent. If that person is not a meditative fellow, a person that can be quiet, a person that can observe, a person that will know how to moderate his word, how to choose his word, how to know when to talk, when to be quiet, how to say what he needs to say, he can lose a lot of things that should have come into the country. Yes, it's like that. Lost through much talking. Or sometimes it may be that uh, there is a particular problem with the in-laws. And then you say, well, what am I going to do? And then you send a particular person to go and speak to the in-laws. And when the fellow got there, he didn't keep quiet, he didn't observe, he didn't meditate, he didn't even pray before he went. It depends upon his natural ability. And he got there, and while the in-laws were talking, he didn't know the appropriate thing to say at the appropriate time. He talked and talked and talked and talked too much. And he spoiled the problem, spoiled the whole thing. And the thing even became worse than when he went. That's what you will discover. Have you, have you discovered that sometimes talking causes accident? The driver is, uh, you know, driving. And there is uh, a lady sitting by, sitting by him. And this driver may be his, his own car. He has his own vehicle. He gave this uh, fellow lift. And uh, they start talking. Talk, 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 talk. The lady will talk. He, he will talk. And in trying to impress the lady in talking, he doesn't know that a vehicle is coming. Eventually, he'll be, looking by, he'll be looking sideways and talking and talking. An accident can come. How many people have lost their lives? Just like that on the steering. Just by talking. Sometimes you see, when you see people that just talk without any limit. They talk without any observation. They talk without any meditation. They talk without any check, without any control. They talk themselves into the hands of people that can destroy their lives. And they lose a lot. Oh yes, they lose a lot. Let me show you one man in the Bible. As I said, we may not have time to read all the references, but let me show you this. This man, he had the Spirit of God. 
he had the power of God. And he so much had the power of God in his life that nobody in Israel had been able to do what this man was able to do with the power of God. The enemies of Israel, they feared him. Anywhere you mention his name, they feared him. But you know, he lost everything by much, much talking. Sometimes, some vessels, they lose so much oil. Precious thing that they lose. And because they are leaking so much and talking so much, they will lose all that they have got. And this man lost the power of God in his life. And this is something you cannot buy with money. This is something you cannot even buy with sacrifice. This is something that before he was born, an angel came to the parents to talk to them. That this man will be born, the Spirit of God, the power of God will fill him. It's something he couldn't buy with money, but he lost it. How many people have lost something so precious you couldn't buy with money? You couldn't buy with anything you couldn't get anyway. But they have lost it. Let's look at it. Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16 from verse 15. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Let's stop there for a moment, my brothers and sisters. You see, the word of God is deep. The word of God is very, very deep. I'm sure that many of us who have read this passage before, but let me point something to you. This woman was an agent of the Philistines, an agent of the enemy. Samson never knew. And yet he was talking and talking and talking and talking. And the woman never revealed her own secret. The woman had a secret. The secret is this. She had had a covenant with the Philistines that if I reveal the secret of this man to you and you are able to grab him and you are able, he loses his power, this is the amount of money you will give me. And this woman was a secret agent, like a secret policeman, against this man. And Samson never knew how many of us. You are living in a house and there is a, a secret a police. A, an intelligence a kind of person that is there and he will dress ordinarily is there to find out all about you and he never tells you where he works you never know where he's working and he never talks to you about his own personal things and you say you are a Christian you will talk and talk and talk and from the words of your mouth you will eventually get to the prison from the words of Samson's mouth he eventually got into prison there are, you know, there are people that are witches and wizards, and they have terrible, terrible power. They are agents of Satan. They can live in the same house with you for five years. You will never know they are witch. You will never know that they have evil power. You will never know that they are agents of uh, Satan. And yet, some of us, these people are living with you, woman that is a witch, a man that is a wizard, and you will talk and talk and talk, and talk yourself into the camp of the enemy until they are going to bind you. Until they are going to take you. Look at this woman, an agent of Satan. An agent of the enemy. She never told Samson the secret of her own life. Her own conversation was superficial on the surface. And yet Samson's conversation was very, very deep. The very secret of his own life. Let me tell you something. Some of these things that we are talking about, even the children of Israel, they never knew it about Samson. And yet, Samson, what he didn't say, what he didn't reveal to the children of Israel, 
to the people of God. He revealed it unto this woman, an agent of Satan. You see, there are some of us, some things we don't even reveal to the children of God. Some things you don't tell your coordinator. Some things you don't tell your leader. Some things you don't tell the people that are praying with you. You go and tell the unbeliever. And the unbeliever you are telling is an agent. An agent of Satan. An agent of wicked people. And they are trying to grab you. They are trying to know your secret. They are trying to know, ah, ah, how is it? Uh, well, tell us. You are going strong every day. And this is happening to you. And uh, we, we used to know you. And uh, tell us more, tell us more. And uh, they, you are like uh, something they wind up. And you begin to talk like a parrot. You talk like a parrot. They say, is that so? Then they laugh. They say, tell me more. Then you tell them more. How about this, your business? You tell them more. How about this, your wife? You tell them more. How about your children? You tell them more. And you talk yourself into the hands of witches and wizards. Look at something here. What even believers did not know about him, he told to the woman. If you talk too much, you will get into trouble. You see, even children, the children that have familiar spirits, they can be there in that house, you will not hear it from them. They can say other things. When it comes to that area, oh no, they are very quiet about that area. Why is it that little boys and little girls that are agents of the enemy will even know how to be quiet? Sometimes you even call some of these children, you threaten them. You beat them, and you sometimes you encourage them, sometimes you promise them something in an effort to make them reveal the secret of their evil power. These children, only 8 years of age, only 10 years of age, only 15 years of age, they will never tell you. You can beat them, you can threaten them, they will endure everything, they will never open their mouth to tell you. Look at something, old man. Look at something, an adult. He didn't know with the Spirit of God upon him, with the power of God upon him, he didn't know how to be quiet, see what he has lost. Many of us will lose a lot. We lose a lot. Let me tell you this. You see, sometimes when somebody comes from the village, and uh, they send him from the village, he wouldn't tell you they sent him, and he say, I am the sister of uh, so-and-so. I'm sure you know our family. We are together. We are, of the same. We are relatives. And then... This person you have, you have just known for one hour. This person that just introduced herself or himself to you yesterday, you begin to talk. Where you are working, your salary, and when you got married, and your wife is pregnant now. Eh, hey, your wife is pregnant now. Uh, how many months? Then you tell him, ah, many of us were the people that caused me uh, uh, havoc and mishap for our own wife, for our own people. Because we talk too much. If you, if you are talking too much, you will lose a lot. Don't talk too much. Don't talk too much. Make sure that you meditate. Make sure that you are very thoughtful. And of course, gossiping should not be in our life. Backbiting should not be in our life. Look at something. He shouldn't even have gone to Delilah. Shouldn't have gone to this woman of the Philistines. What was he finding there? Where are you find? What are you finding? What are you looking for in the camp of the enemy? What is this discussion that is so that is so intimate, that is so close with uh, somebody you saw on the side of the road? See, my brothers, when we started this ministry, all these women that are standing by the side of the road, we don't know their house number. We don't know where they are coming from. We don't know why they are just on the road like that. And you will see them. Sometimes they will sit there on the pavement as if they are waiting for you. When we were young in this ministry, we never carried them in our vehicle. But some men today, they will say they are Christians. And you see these agents of Satan by the side of the road, then you carry them. And they know how to start a conversation. Oh, they begin to say, oh, Mr., uh, how are you? What's your name? They introduce themselves. They can talk. And you begin to talk. You open up. And you begin to say, eh, I go to deeper life, uh, can you come to church? Ah, they say, I will come to church. Conversation has begun. Uh, they will get you to hell before you wake up. By that talking. But if you go your way, the same thing, sisters, uh, with this brought these men of the world, we, are ve we were very, very careful. We know how we talk. We know when to talk. We know when to keep quiet. And we know how to meditate. And the same thing should be in our lives today. If we talk too much, if we gossip, if we're tailbearers, if we're talkatives, we'll get into problem. 
Let the Spirit of God set a watch over your mouth. I said I'll not be able to read all the references, but I'm sure you remember Zechariah. Uh, the angel came to him, and he told him that his prayer had come up to God for a memorial, and that he'll have a child. And then instead of keeping quiet, and meditate, and ask himself, can God do it? Not talk out, but ask himself, and then see in the Bible some people that God has known that for in the past in the Old Testament and meditate on that and know that God says I'm God I change not and just say I accept the word of the Lord he didn't say that he began to talk how shall it be seeing that I'm old he lost his power of speech immediately and he couldn't talk anymore he became dumb because the angel said he will be numb. And for nine months he was numb. He lost that power of speech because of talking too much. How many of us will lose our business by talking too much? Sometimes it may be that in the place of work, your boss has something against you. And they said, ah, so and so, why did you do this like this? Why did you do this like this? Without meditating, without quietness, we just begin to talk. And the way we talk may so uh, annoy the uh, boss that you just lose your job. But why can't we keep quiet? Why can't we meditate? Don't you see Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ? Oh, she was quiet. A meditative woman. A quiet woman. And you can see that in her life. Even when she was pregnant of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph would have misunderstood. Yet you can see that quietness. And you see the Lord himself, how he opened not his mouth. He held his peace. We need this quality because if we don't have the quality, we'll lose a lot of things in life. Now, let me just conclude. Point three, power of quietness. Power of quietness. Again, so many references we cannot read. But uh, look at Second Kings chapter 18. Second Kings chapter 18. When you get back home, you may need to read from verse 17 all through to verse 36. Or read the whole chapter yourself. But let me just read to you verse 36. Verse 36. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was, answer him not. The enemy came and the enemy was bragging. And the enemy was saying, I've defeated this nation, that nation, and no king and no idol, no God was able to deliver them from my hand. And he was bragging. And the people, it was a terrible situation. It was a frightening situation. But even though with all the frightening situation, the fearful uh, situation, they still held their peace because the king had given them a commandment. Answer him not. And then... The man even wrote a letter. And this letter was to terrify Ezekiah. And Ezekiah didn't say anything to him. Ezekiah didn't uh, make any noise about it. Ezekiah didn't talk and talk and talk. Talk in fear. Talk in doubt. Talk in unbelief. Talk in uncertainty. And talk himself into defeat. He went to the house of the Lord and he opened the letter. He spread it before the Lord. Isn't that what we are to do? When the enemies write a bad letter to you, when your in-laws write a bad letter to you, when your place of work writes a bad letter to you, when a friend writes a, a terrible letter to you, when enemies threaten you and they write a bad letter to you, are we supposed to be talking without meditating? Are we supposed to be talking without thinking of the word of God? Are we supposed to be just be talking, talking, and bragging like the people of the world are bragging? You will come to the house of God in your district here. And you spread that letter before the Lord. And you pray before the Lord. And you hand over the case before the Lord. If you have chance to see the coordinator, you know when he counsels, most of our coordinators counsel on Tuesday. Uh, every Tuesday in the evening, you will come to the church here in the district and you will talk to the coordinator. If it's something the coordinator cannot handle, many of the cases we have, the coordinators can handle. Only that many times, as I said the other Wednesday, some of us are not respecting those coordinators to know that by the grace of God they can handle the situation. If it is something he cannot handle, he will refer you to the pastor. 
But if they are not able to see the pastor in one day or two days, that is not the reason to be talking and talking, getting annoyed and fighting the coordinator, fighting the head usher, fighting everybody. You will live a meditative, quiet life. The Lord will see your quietness and in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And so Ezekiah spread a letter before the Lord and he prayed and you see God fought for him and he overcame the enemy. I'm praying for you my brothers and sisters, you will overcome the enemy. All the problems that you may be thinking about, if you take time to meditate, if you take time to be quiet and you take time to seek the face of the Lord, you will overcome in Jesus name. Now let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, reading from verse 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifies great offenses. Uh, you know, there are times in our church when a person may even do something wrong. And as we do something wrong, the leadership in the church when I say leadership in the church, the leadership in the church I'm referring to may be a coordinator, may be the marriage committee, may be, you know, any kind of leadership in the church, you understand. The leadership in the church may call you, and then uh, you've done this thing. You know it's a great offense. And they say, why have you done this? Why have you done this? And uh, they talk to you because they're trying to uphold the standard of righteousness and holiness in the church. If you will not run away because of that, if you will hold on gently, if you will, if you will yield to all the things they are saying, even if uh, you are disciplined, even if you are told you cannot do this, you cannot do this now, even if, uh, you know, we have to make announcements about you, you are quiet, you do not leave your place, you are just meditatingly looking at uh, them and also looking unto God. You know, the thing will be over in a short time. And we will, they would even be encouraged to pray with you and pray for you. Everything will be over. But you know, sometimes when we have a problem in the church and we, we react, even though we have done wrong, even though we have offended, we are not yielding, we are not keeping quiet, and we are rebellious and noisy about it. Well, that's why some of our problems are prolonged. My brothers and sisters, let's keep to the word of God. There is power in quietness. Our time is gone already. But let me just encourage you that you will look up to the Lord, that God will help you, that you will pray unto the Lord and say, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. It's true I talk too much. It's true I complain too much. It's true I react too much. It's true that whenever something happens, either in the family, either in the backyard, either in the kitchen, either in the place of work, I talk too much. Help me, grant me the grace to be meditative. Grant me the grace to be prayerful, so that there will be power in my life. So that the power that I should have with God, to prevail with God, and to move the hand that holds the universe, I will have in my life. The power to do good. The power to overcome all temptations. The power of godliness. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power to witness. The power of authoritative speech. The power of Christ's resurrection power over disease and demons, power over every power of the enemy I need in my life. And I know the Lord will give it to me. We need quietness and we need the strength of the Lord. We need also the confidence and faith in the Lord. Because it says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Let's rise up and let's talk to the Lord. Now whatever is making us to talk, 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 gossip, Still bearing all that, that God will remove it away from our lives. Open your mouth, my brothers and sisters. Talk to the Lord in prayer that you will discover the grace to be quiet. You will discover the grace to be quiet. Don't go home yet. Don't go home. If you go home, you'll continue the talking. Let God do something in your heart and life today. Let there, cha let there be a change in your life even today. That everywhere you go, you cannot keep yourself. You cannot say, I will try. I will endeavor to be quiet. You need the grace of God in your life. That will bring the quietness, the peace, the serenity, tranquility, the peace in your life. So that you will not always be talking, talking, and talking. Open up 
your heart before the Lord. Say, God, is an area of weakness in my life. I talk too much. Lord, control me. The Lord will do it. And great will be the grace, the peace, the rest, the success, the progress, and the power in your life. I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them.